The easiest part to clean is the mouthpiece. Simply wash it with soap and warm water. A mouthpiece brush is an essential tool for this to remove buildup from the back bore, which is the interior of the shank here. But if you don't have a mouthpiece brush, you could use a Q-tip or a pipe cleaner in a pinch. If your mouthpiece is made of metal, as most brass instrument mouthpieces are, you could also just wash it in the dishwasher. If you have a plastic mouthpiece, like this plastic trumpet mouthpiece, that may not fare as well in the dishwasher, so check with the manufacturer before trying that. The best way to keep the rest of the instrument maintained is to have it regularly cleaned by a technician, and I typically recommend having that done annually. But in between those cleanings, there are a lot of things you can do at home. First of all, oil your rotors regularly, and for rotary brass instruments, that should be at least once a week. Unlike piston brass, rotary brass requires two different types of oil, a heavier bearing or spindle oil that usually comes in a bottle with a needle tip like this, and then a conventional valve or piston oil like you would use on a trumpet or any other piston brass instrument. To use the spindle oil, unscrew the top cap from one valve, apply oil to the raised section in the middle, which is where the spindle is, and work the valve around to distribute it. Then flip the instrument over and apply oil to the other spindle here. There will be a gap between the rotor casing and the stop arm. Apply a few drops there and again work the rotor around to distribute it. Do that for all three rotors, replacing the caps as you go. And then to use this piston oil, remove one slide and place a few drops of oil down the slide tubes so that they can reach the body of the rotor. Again, work the rotor around to distribute it and then replace the slide before moving on to the next rotor. As you push the slide in, make sure you depress the rotor so that air can move through it. If your valves do become sluggish or sticky, don't attempt to move them by brute force, especially not by pressing hard on the spatulas. Instead, drop some oil down the slide tubes as I just showed, and then allow the instrument to sit for 30 minutes. That will give the oil a chance to work into the space between the rotor and its casing. After 30 minutes, grasp the spindle directly with your thumb and forefinger and attempt to turn it. Don't press on the spatula because you could either break the string or bend the mechanism. Grasp directly on the spindle and attempt to turn. If it still doesn't move, you could try oiling it again and waiting another 30 minutes and then trying again, but likely at that point it will need to go to a technician as soon as possible so they can remove the rotors and clean them properly. Stuck slides are a common problem, and while I'm not going to advise you how to free them yourself in this video because you could potentially do some damage to your instrument by trying that, a great way to prevent them from getting stuck is just to move the slides every now and then, even if you don't feel you need to do so for tuning purposes. Just move them out and in. That will break up any bits of corrosion before they have a chance to seize things up. If you have your instrument cleaned regularly, you shouldn't need to grease your slides because they'll be greased at the shop, but you can if you want to with any good quality slide grease. Simply pull the slide out apply grease to only the inner tubes reinsert the slide and then wipe off any excess that squishes out with a clean rag. Because rotors aren't meant to be opened up and serviced at home, there aren't many quick fixes you can do for your instrument, but there are a couple. First, if you should lose a rotor bumper, you can replace it by rolling up some masking tape or painter's tape and placing it in the recess. To see if you got the thickness correct, remove the top cap on that rotor and look at the witness marks on the top spindle, which are these marks here that should line up. If they don't line up, add or subtract thickness to or from your piece of tape as needed. 
The other quick fix you can attempt at home has to do with water keys, which this horn doesn't have, but other rotary instruments like tubas and trombones may. I have a trumpet slide here to serve as an example. If you should lose a water key cork, you can take a piece of that same masking or painter's tape and wad it up, fold it over itself repeatedly to make a temporary pad. I put a little piece of paper on one side of this to prevent it from sticking to the hole on the instrument. Just place it in there, allow it to stick to the water key, and you have a temporary, mostly functional water key cork. If the spring on your water key should become broken. You can fix that by wrapping a hair tie around the water key, like so. Avoid using a rubber band here, as the sulfur and rubber can react with brass or silver and corrode the metal. As a last resort, you could cover the hole in the instrument with electrical tape or a band-aid, but in that case you wouldn't be able to drain water through it, so you'd occasionally have to remove the slide and dump water out manually. Final note about brass instruments and solder joints. If you have a joint that breaks, don't attempt to use any sort of adhesive to reattach it. The best thing you can do in a pinch is to use a zip tie. Just wrap it around the brace and the joint, pull it, cut off the excess, and that will hold for sometimes several months. And it will be easy for your technician to remove when you take it into the shop to have them properly resolder the joint. I hope you found this information helpful, but if you have any further questions or you encounter an issue that I didn't cover here, please reach out and I'll do whatever I can to help you. If I've edited this video correctly, then my contact information should be appearing somewhere on the screen right now. Stay safe and thanks for watching.